hi viewers now i will playing a quiz and this quiz is basically related to the piping flexibility analysis some of the key questions i will be just looking into and trying to answer them so let's start the piping flexibility analysis first question Acoustic induced turbulence normally results in the vibration in which frequency range? Well, this is related to the vibration and acoustic induced turbulence. Well, that's a higher mode of vibration. That's ah, sorry, the timeout. I need to be quick. In fact, WRC one zero seven limits T by D ratio to below. It's one zero seven, so the answer should be point three because two nine seven limits T by D ratio to point five. So I got hundred. Increasing pipe wall thickness can reduce vibration due to water hammering. Well, increasing wall resistance at strength, in fact, the piping doesn't reduce the wall. So the answer is false. Ah, yeah, right. In two phase flow, slug density is that the mixed density of the fluid. Well, slug density is generally more than the mixed density of the fluid because slug does uh, well more, 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 more. Yeah, that's right. Failure theory associated with the ductile material is for well, the ductile. It's the maximum shear stress theory because normal is for the brittle material. So maximum shear stress theory. So got hundred again. Which stress type is least generated within pipe during normal operation? Least generated. Well, that is the radial stress. We don't take that into consideration in the normal operation case. So that's it. Now, close relief valves and hot blowdown system should be given special attention due to transients in well not only in temperature because uh, we do get the standby case but it's both pressure and temperature because acoustic induced vibration also we need to take care of it. Next question centrifugal compressors running at a low speed are potential source of vibration. Yeah they are and generally due to rotating stall as mentioned in the energy institute guidelines so that statement is true. Well that's fine. Value of stress intensification factor is independent of thickness. No, when we look into stress intensification factor, the formulation in appendix D of B thirty one point three, we see it's a thickness dependent. So it's not independent. So it's going to be false. Okay, that's fine. Periodic flow induced excitation due to dead leg creates pressure disturbances in which frequency range? Well, that is generally in the low frequency range excitation. Yeah. Most of the response to slug flow is primarily caused by dash frequency modes with dash model. Well, this is low frequency modes and with a high modal displacements. So that's low and high. That's a can got out of the below flange leakage check method, which is very conservative. Well, in that case, it is a pressure equivalent method. That's the Kellogg's pressure equivalent method, which is really very much conservative. The rest two are less. That's again right. Now, maximum normal stress theory is applicable to, well, that's for the brittle material because the tile we do have the shear stress, so it's applicable to the brittle material and hence, yeah, that's right. Which is another source of sustained stress generated in the piping system? Sustained stress generated in the piping system, well, insulation, yeah, that is pipe weight, yeah. Wind load, no, 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 that's an occasional loading. So when load is answer because pressure two is also okay. Now cryogenic hydrocarbon lines shall be analyzed at which temperature? <coughs> cryogenic line, yeah, it cryogenic means the low temperature lines. Obviously, it has to be analyzed at low temperature, design temperature, but steam out also is necessary for the process lines. So that's true. Slug forces are generated when change in flow direction occurs at an elbow leading to the change in momentum. That's quite true. Any change in the direction <coughs> leads to the slug forces being generated. <coughs> so that's true. Yeah. Brittle materials can be used for the fatigue loading. No, not at all. Because we, for the fatigue loading, do the tensile. We use it generally more tensile materials. So brittle material, no ductile. Ductile is the preferred option. So it's false. Ah, yeah, that's nice. Failure in a body may occur purely due to normal stress. Well, that's true. Maximum stress three based on that. True. Cold spring is may be used to hasten the thermal shakedown of a system in few operating cycles. Yeah, there generally it does 
hastens the thermal shakedown of the piping system. So it's true. Which two-phase flow is more dangerous in terms of causing transient vibration? Annular? No, yeah, annular has got a liquid as well as the gas is medium. The bubble flow is small. It's not a slug, but plug, yeah, more CV of them because liquid is more in fact. Oh, that's nice. High score. 1900. That's better. Bye. We'll, we'll see you next quiz.